We've spent a few videos exploring different approaches to retrieval augmented generational RAG. And one thing they all have in common is that they're using embeddings in some way. And I recently came across an interesting idea called Matryoshka embeddings, which I want to explore in this video. So just to quickly remind ourselves, so the idea with embeddings is that we're taking usually some text, we're running it through an embedding model, and then it's giving us back an array of numbers, and those are representing the text in some way. Now, usually when you're creating those embeddings, they're quite big, they're often more than a thousand elements each, and that can take up quite a lot of space. And so the Matryoshka embedding approach says, well, what about if we try, while we're building these embeddings, we're gonna think that maybe people are gonna wanna have a bit smaller versions of them as well. And so we'll try and train them so that we store the more important information earlier in the embeddings so that you could potentially then truncate it. So kind of take the, some of the numbers from the beginning and remove the ones at the end, saving space while losing only a little bit of quality. And so not every embedding algorithm supports this technique. So far, the ones that I know that do are mixed bread and nomic. And so in this video, we're gonna explore mixed bread. So let's launch IPython and I'm gonna import DuckDB and connect to a database that I've got. Again, we'll put all the links to this in the description below and we're gonna describe a database called Olympics. So you can see it's got an index, got some text, a URL and a title. Let's have a quick look what's in the table. So this is a data set that we've been using for a few videos now. So this is an article about the Olympics opening ceremony that was about a couple of weeks ago at this point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by altering this table to add a column that's gonna just store the basic embedding. So 1,024 elements. And we're gonna use Llama CPP to create the embeddings and we'll initialize that with the mixed bread embedding model. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the index and the text from the Olympics table. We'll create the embeddings on the text in there. And then we're gonna go through, join the rows and the embeddings back together. And we're gonna update the Olympics table with those embeddings that we've just computed. Let's have a look what we've got. So you can see we've now got an extra column called embeddings underscore 1024, and it's got the embeddings for each sentence. What we're gonna do next is see what happens if we truncate it. So we're gonna try like truncating it down, like so we'll do 512, 256, 128, 64, and 32. So kind of truncating from the beginning. Now the suggestion is that when you truncate the embeddings, the initial ones were probably normalized. And so you'll wanna normalize your truncated version as well. And so we're gonna create ourselves the normalize function that does that. And then we're gonna register it with DuckDB. It comes back with this deprecation warning. I don't think that's anything to do with our function. I think this is something inside DuckDB. Let's have a look at how to use it. So we're gonna do a query against the Olympics table and we'll try and normalize that embeddings 1024 column and we'll get 512 elements. And you can see it comes back. There's our column with the normalized embeddings uh, truncated down to 512 elements. Let's now update our table to have lots of different truncated embeddings. So we're going to do, as I say, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512. We'll iterate through each of those, altering the table to add a column for that dimension. And then we're going to go and update it to call the normalized function. And then we'll truncate it by the amount that the dimension defines. And then once we've done that, we're gonna define ourselves a vector search function. We'll pass in a query and the dimension that you wanna use. We'll create a search vector for the query. If the dimension is less than the length of the search vector, i.e. we wanna truncate it, then we're gonna do our truncation and normalize it. And then we'll write a query that uses cosine similarity to find the closest matches in the database for our query. Let's give it a try. So where did the open ceremony take place? We'll call that just with the default. And you can see it comes back. So the answers for this are zero and 10. So index is zero and 10, that's where the answers lie. Let's have a look what happens if we do this for all of our dimensions. And we're gonna use the rich console to print out the results. So you can see 1024, it's got zero and 10. 512 has got zero and 10. If we come down a little bit, 256 has got just zero. 128's got just zero. 64 has then got both of them again. So that's kind of interesting. 32 doesn't have any of the answers. And then 16, we've got, the index 10 has showed up. Okay, so now to properly test how well these truncated embeddings are working, we're gonna run it through a bunch of questions. I've got a file here and the key is the question and then the value is a dictionary where we have the index and then the, a score. So we're gonna ignore the score. So I've just put one for the score. So for example, where did the opening ceremony take place? The, the documents that, or the indexes that have that are zero and 10. 
Uh, what colors were the fireworks during the ceremony? The answer is index two. And we're gonna be using a library called Ranks, which is a library of fast ranking evaluation metrics implemented in Python. It has loads of different metrics. The one that we're gonna use is hit rate. So basically, did we get the right index coming back? So we're gonna import some classes and functions from Ranks. We're gonna get the partial function from func tools. And then we're gonna initialize what they call a question relevance judgment from our questions file. And then we're gonna create a variable that has all of our functions with the dimension defined. And then we're gonna pass in the query in a second. Now ranks then has the concept of what they call a run. So that's like what actually happens. So we're gonna initialize one of those. We'll pass in the QRLs, the retrieval function and the name of it. And then we're gonna create a, what they call a run dictionary. It's gonna have the question. It's gonna have the index that came back and the score. And we're gonna get that by iterating, by calling the retrieval function and getting just the index and the score. And then we'll do that for every question that was in the QRLs that we just created. Now we're gonna run that. So we're gonna time it. We're gonna call the create run function for each of our functions. We'll speed this up a little bit because it takes, it's basically going and calling the database and checking the result every time. And it takes just under 18 seconds to run. What we can do now is call our compare function. We'll pass in the questions and the and the answers, we'll pass in the runs, and then as I say, we're gonna use the hit rate metric. Okay, and now we can have a look at the answers. Now, if you look at the bottom, 1,024 got 15 out of the 20 correct. So that was kind of our base rate. Now, I was assuming that all the other ones were gonna do worse, but it's kind of interesting because 512, 256, and 128 have done better. Once we go below 64, it sort of starts to get quite a lot worse. Although interestingly, 16 is better than 32. So I think we probably need to try this out with like a few more questions, maybe on more data to see if, see what the what the trend is, because it's kind of surprising to me what's happened here. If you know why, why it's doing this, please let me know uh, in the comments below. The other cool thing that we can do is we can compare, well, how did each one of them do against each other? So we can call the win tie loss uh, attribute, and you can see if we we scroll down we can see how did 1024 compare to 16 so it's got the wins so seven times 1024 was better 10 times they were the same and then it's saying uh, three times uh, 16 was better and you can see the other comparisons as well if you want to learn more about the evaluation technique in the ranks library you'll want to 